Brothers and sisters, we welcome you here today for the services for Brother Don Okerlund. I am uh, Bishop Andrew Dalsrud. I will be conducting services today. Celebration in the honor of the life of Don L. Okerlund, our kind and loving husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, uncle, cousin, friend, and neighbor. He was born March 2nd, 1947 in Salina, Utah. Passed away May 28, 2021 in Gunnison, Utah. His parents, Clyde Pershing and Helen Ivy Larson Okerland, both deceased. Married Jolaine Okerland, June 15, 1968 in Richfield, Utah. Their marriage was solemnized in the Logan LDS Temple, May 13, 1969. Their children, Jason and Mary Okerland, Justin and Tammy Okerland, Marlo and Jeremy Taylor, Tyler and Ashley Okerland. Sixteen grandchildren, three great-grandchildren. Brother and sister, Paul and Marcia Okerland, Janet and Jim Towers. Brother and sister-in-law, Terry and Sharon Anderson, Trista, Tricia, Dean deceased, Trista, Trista Meekham deceased, preceded in death by a granddaughter, Taylor Bryn Okerland. The services today, June 3rd, 2021. Compassionate services are being provided by the Salina Fourth Ward LDS Relief Society. The family prayer this morning has been given previously by Justin Okerland, a son. Prelude and postlude music today is being provided by Kathy Anderson. I'm Bishop Dalsred conducting. The invocation will be given by Jeremy Taylor, a son-in-law. Then we'll have a congregational hymn, Love at Home, accompanied by Kathy Anderson, chorister Marion Harrison. Following this, we'll have a tribute by Tyler Okerland, a son, a tribute by Marlo Taylor, a daughter, Musical selection by the grandchildren, Families Can Be Together Forever, accompanied by Kathy Anderson. Another tribute by Justin Okerland, a son, and also by Jason Okerland, a son. And we'll go to that point. Dear Heavenly Father, as we humbly come before Thee at this time, we're to you grateful for Don, the example he was to each one of us, the Christ-like love he had for each and every one of us, and we're grateful for him. We're grateful for the love he had for his family, and the person that he was. At this time, we ask that your spirit will be here to bless those who have been asked to speak, and that we'll remember Don and the great example he was to each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, we're indeed grateful for those friends and family and co-workers and everybody that has traveled today to remember Dawn. We ask thee that you'll bless those that they may return home safely. We ask thee that it's time that you'll have a special blessing for Jolaine and that you'll comfort her in this time as well as each one of us. Our dear Father, once again, we are in deep grip for Dawn. The person he was, an example he, he, he sh was. 
when I'm in America, we say these things. They might say, Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Appreciate everybody coming here today and um, honoring my dad. It's been a, uh, a blessing to see everybody come through this afternoon. I appreciate y'all uh, making the effort to come here and, and the long drive. <clears throat> You're all here because my dad has influenced you in some way. With respect to his personality, we would all agree on the same thing. He was always so nice, so pleasant to be around, and always wore a smile on his face. We knew him as hardworking, strong, engaging, and always on the go. He was a giver, a sharer, a provider, and as my dad and your friend, he was a listener. You've all shared a laugh with him, 
and you were a better person because of it. He had other notable characteristics that shape who he was. He was always a 5 a.m. early riser, never needing an alarm clock. He was the recipient and good sport for countless practical jokes, many of which were authored by my own mother. He was skilled at penmanship and taught his children that skilled hands were just as important as skilled minds. He wore a Carhartt shirt for the casual days and was always well dressed for kid or grandkid events. He was patient. If a task took longer because he taught you along the way, the finished project was always better. He was a storyteller, and the campfire felt better and burned brighter when he was around it. He was efficient with his time, but always made himself available if anyone needed him. He admired, he admired people's talents, but was quiet and humble at the countless ones he had himself. Aside from this, <clears throat> there were three characteristics of my dad that always surfaced to the top. Number one, he created and enjoyed good humor. Let me set the stage for a moment. <clears throat> October 1986. Our recent move to Salina was kicked off by a three-generation deer hunt on the Old Woman Plateau. My grandpa, my dad, and his three sons. I was an eight-year-old sponge at the time, soaking up the strategies of the hunting world. Opening morning, my dad and I stood alone on a ridge as we watched the sunrise. His gun of choice that year was an old 30-30 lever-action gun. Warm by the early morning sun, he suddenly handed me the gun and asked me to turn my back so he could take a few, minute, few minutes to enjoy nature in the nature. Tyler, if you see anything, shoot it. <clears throat> I suddenly embraced two, th two things, trust for not looking, and my rite of passage to hunt something on my own. No sooner as I turned my head, commotion was quickly brewing in the trees behind me. No, it wasn't my dad, but a huge herd of deer sprinting on the other side of him. He was stuck in the middle. I bravely turned. A big buck was leading the herd and I panicked. Dad, sorry dad, what do I do? Quick, give me the gun, he said. I took a few steps back. Now, if you've hunted, you know that seconds are critical with running deer. They're smart, they're quick, they're cunning, they're elusive. What appeared to almost be rehearsed my dad had the gun lever pulled and the buck in the crosshairs. Bang! The lead buck dropped, dropped in its tracks. As I stood in awe behind him, I quickly assessed the situation. I missed my chance of shooting something, and my dad took charge with his pants still down. <laughs> Oh man, we still laugh at this. <clears throat> My mind's eye can see in slow motion today that moment. I was the lone witness of two astronomical marvels that morning. A bright blazing sun and a full moon. <clears throat> oh, dad. Uh, <clears throat> characteristic number two and number three. Optimism and perseverance were ingrained to the core of my dad. Over the last few months, I had the blessing of spending hours with my dad at his bedside. We shared sacred moments together. He was a fighter and persevered through many limiting challenges. I'm going to get, med I'm going to get better was a daily comment to me, our family and the medical staff. He said it with assurance and conviction. I believed it and he believed it. With his optimism, I leave us all with that same challenge. I'm going to get better. Better each day at who we are personally. Better at who we are as individuals. Better at who we are to others. And better at who we are spiritually. I am grateful for this opportunity and I'm honored to 
stand and give a tribute to my dad. I have zero complaints from him. And I hit the jackpot. He yeah, was, was a fantastic dad. <clears throat> I know he had a testimony of our Savior. And he stood at this very pulpit <clears throat> when I was a youth. And I watched him share his testimony. <clears throat> and it was because of me watching him that I've got that same testimony. I know he loved our Savior, and I do too. And I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, on behalf of our family, I would like to begin by thanking everyone. That's here today. And those that have sent their condolences to our family. We've received countless phone calls, texts, flowers, mails, visits, thoughts and prayers over the past few days. They've been both of a comfort during this difficult time and has been a great reminder of the impact that my dad had on so many others. It's a testimony to me to know that the love that so many of you had for him. For all you here today and those watching online have all known my dad in a variety of roles throughout his life. Many of these roles have included a husband, a dad, grandpa, great-grandpa, friend, brother, uncle, neighbor, bishop, co-worker, craftsman, and mentor. It was because of these roles that he lived a life that was full of joy and happiness. It was through his role as our dad that he taught us through his testimony and example the importance of family, love, forgiveness, courage, patience, intelligent, hard work, humor, and positivity. As I reflect on my life, I have so many memories where att these attributes played such a huge role in my childhood. Whether it was how he found, posit found the positive after tasting a really, really bad batch of cookies that Bree and I made from scratch. He, he claimed they were the best, but we knew the dog wouldn't ev even eat them. So. He was forgiving me for ruining in the lawnmower blade after running over the trampoline frame. He always made us feel good regardless of the circumstances that we were in. And as a side note, just within the past few weeks while at the hospital, he was always telling someone that I was the best lawnmower he had, which made me feel pretty good to this day because I've never seen a lawnmower blade so twisted up as that day I was trying to help him out. My parents' priority and was, and still is, the, is their family. Most of my childhood memories are full of great time spent together as family. Some of my fondest memories were the summer months spent in the Forest Service cabin at Fish Lake. It was here we learned to love and appreciate the outdoors and of course Smokey the Bear. And I think that love of Smokey the Bear is instilled in all of us because there's not a parade or anything that goes by that we don't get excited to see Smokey the Bear. My dad taught us it's okay to earn bragging rights for when we caught the biggest fish or just enjoy the beauty of a still water while out on the lake. Another role that has influenced me in my dad's, is my dad's strong work ethic. He always showed us the value of hard work and diligence, lessons that I will forever take to heart. We all learned from him that regardless of the task, it was not do worth doing if you did not do it right the first time. My dad not only loved his job working for the Forest Service and the 45 years of service that he put his heart and soul into every day, but the talents and work that developed at home was a, played a huge part in the impact in me. He loved to work out in his shop, and at times he would just say he was out there puttering. But we all know the result of puttering resulted in endless amounts of doll furniture, doll furniture toe painting projects, fences, barns, corrals, shelves, and signs, all of which things we will take and live, um, all of which are things that will forever live on in each of our households 
as those items were made from the heart and the hands of my dad. As we got older and got married, our dad never stopped helping. He kept teaching us the importance of responsibility and the importance of family life. He was always interested in what we were doing, what was going on, and proud of our accomplishments. He has supported us in every step of the way and always there when we needed him. It's not, and it's not, excuse me, it's not been until the past few years that I've grown to admire and appreciate my dad and his willpower to never give up and to stay positive. It's become more evident to me than ever. that in the past few months of his life, how his health has declined. It seemed that one thing led to another, and his hospital stays and doctor visits were getting more and more consistent. Regardless of why he was in the hospital, he always remained positive and determined, like Tyler said, to get better because he wanted to go back home. There would be days that would be hard, and we knew he did not feel well, but then the next day he would rally and prove us all wrong. The way he handles the obstacles with such strength and determination was such an inspiration to me. He made us see the positive in all things and to always count our blessings. He taught me to never give up. And like Tyler said about always getting better, I want to tie that in to, the, to what I kind of pulled away from what I gained and, and why I feel as I'm a better person um, because of my dad. Um, not only did my dad want us to be better, but we need to know to not give up because there will be days ahead that will be hard. And we will struggle. But if we work to stay positive and never give up, just like my dad did in the hospital, we will all be better because of him and his example. And eventually we will all be able to return home. In closing, I am grateful for my dad and all that he has taught me. He was a great example, my hero and my best friend. He and I have grown closer. In our relationship over the past few years, I got assigned to be his daily or to check on his sugar all the time, and that started about a year ago. So there's, there wasn't a day I wouldn't call him to have him make sure he knew where his sugar was at so we could get him better. And then I was able to spend the last six weeks with him. And I will forever be grateful for that time and caring for him. He will surely be missed. and. Everyone who is here today is symbolic of that fact. He will miss by those he played such an important role in someone else's life. I'm grateful for our Heavenly Father's plan of happiness that he has for his children. I'm grateful that families can be together forever and that someday I will get to see and hug my dad again. It is through our Savior that I'm grateful for him for making this gift possible. I'm grateful for the gospel that gives me the strength to do all things through Christ. And I say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
my dad was a little torn on funerals, and maybe he wasn't. Maybe his stance was clear. He would have, he would have thought that was maybe a little cruel to do to those kids. Um, that was unrehearsed, and um, but also I wonder if. if he's not showing off a little bit because he was proud of those kids and I am today. Um, it's a good group. Uh, part, of, part of what he wanted was a short service and so we've committed to five minutes and that's not hardly enough time to, um, to say a lot. I know my siblings were worried about some redundancy and didn't want that to happen, but I'm going to repeat some things. Um, uh, first of all, my gratitude to everybody here. <clears throat> um, and along with that, I want to I want to extend uh, my gratitude to a few folks. Um, first of all, the nurses and the staff at Gunnison Valley Hospital was amazing during his illness. Uh, words won't go far enough to, to um, adequately express my gratitude to them, to those ladies. And God, I didn't know only their eyes. They were masked and I not only knew their eyes, but they were so compassionate and professional. And, um, and human during some tough times with my dad and, I, and I'm grateful and I hope they know it and I don't know how they'll ever know it because I won't be able to to express it like I should. Dr. Judy over there as well uh, at one point told my dad that he loved him and I believe it. And I don't know if all doctors tell their patients that but, but Dr. Judy did and I appreciate him. We had so many neighbors and friends um, expressed their uh, feelings about my dad to me um, and to the family and, and, and some never came in the station and saw me that they didn't ask about him and it, and it always meant a lot to me I'm not good at extending myself to somebody who's hurting but, but so many of you did that for me and I appreciate it <clears throat> uh, those that he worked with and his associates and friends uh, from work impacted his life like no one else, I think. He had so many good co-workers and, and they were friends. I don't know how to distinguish that. Um, but so many of those folks were so good and, and meant so much to him. A lot of them made it to the hospital to see him and, and he would tell us in the evenings how grateful and how glad he was to see his old friends and spend some time and not everybody could make it and we understand but but the folks that he worked with he respected and I know they and they've expressed that 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 they were respected by him as well it was a it was an important thing for him to have those uh, relationships and I want to I want to say thanks to those that he worked with um, my brothers I've got good brothers uh, who I love and who I'm really proud of I don't make a habit of saying nice things to them or about them and I and I, I don't anticipate it becoming a habit but I love my brothers and they are good um, as good as they get my sister, who until recently I didn't know was an angel, <laughs> she did so much for my dad, and I've thanked her employers because she was able to be there so much, but my sister's an angel, and I love her, and I hope she knows it. Again, I guess words don't do enough. Finally, to my mom, 
I don't want to share a tender uh, moment that I <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> But it's meant so much to me. Um, I was over there, and I don't remember how long ago, but I was over there at their house, and there was time I needed to be there uh, to help help them physically. Um, and this was one of those times I don't remember remember the situation or why I was there, but I was in the other room. And my mom and my dad were together, and she was cleaning him up and fixing him up and putting him back together a little bit from maybe it was a fall, I don't know, but um, and like a like a mother would to a child who was hurt um she she was just talking to him I'm sorry, I'm sorry, she was talking to him about a little Mexican restaurant that they could go to. <laughs> and he would just answer, yeah. Or he would say, okay, I couldn't hear all the words. But I don't throw around Christ-like casually. But that moment was, there was such Christ-like compassion and love from my mom to my dad. But she wiped his tears and and <laughs> and ministered to him, and it's something I'll never forget. It was it was so perfect love. Briefly, I didn't really have any memories to share, but I, but I wanted to share a few things, uh, not even that I learned, but that I was reminded of uh, during this last hospital stay. Because, because my dad, over over this time, became, I don't, it's not the right word. I guess when we all boil our lives down to to what we are um, at at the end he didn't even have the clothes on his back he was in a gown he he was always pretty strict about dressing himself and looking sharp in the hospital always because I think he was always he always knew he was coming home but at the end he he didn't even have clothes on his back and all that was there was what he had become And it's been said before, but he was kind. He was a nice man. He was so nice to the nurses who, who were helping him. He was so full of gratitude and, and, and kind to them. And I was re reminded of that. Like Tyler said, he was funny. And I can't, I can't even give an example of what he may have said. But when a nurse would come in and say, Hold on, I'm here to give you insulin or I'm here to do this. How are you doing? And he would crack something back to him, like uh, just funny, funny stuff. And he was struggling uh, with some of his mental ability, but he was always so quick with the with humor. Um, It's been said, but he was optimistic. He knew he was going to get better, and so many times he did. Um, there were so many times we we thought maybe he wouldn't, and he always did. He always bounced back um, with with that attitude of of I'm going to get a little stronger and I, I want to go home. And um, he faced some pretty long, hard days, but he was always optimistic. And I appreciated that. He was tough. He he had a he had some things in his life that were tough, you know, some, some things he endured and physical uh, pains and things. But he was he was so tough. He never complained. Uh, 
ever at all in the hospital. If you could see he was uncomfortable and ask him if you could adjust or fix him, um, he would consent to that sometimes, but he never complained uh, or would ask for a hand. So tough. This is how I'll remember him. Uh, finally, he was really close to the spirit. Um, a lot of a lot of conversations would turn um, to the things he knew and the things he believed. He talked a lot about his grandkids and, and how proud he was of of his kids. He would speak of my kids to me probably, uh, uh, but he was proud of his of his children and his grandkids. Um, I went over on a Sunday before church once and, and um, I don't know if it was because of my dress but it just turned into an impromptu testimony meeting where he just he just expressed to me how much he loved his Savior. Um, he had a strong, strong belief in the power of the priesthood and uh, of the power of priesthood blessings to, to heal. He always expressed to me uh, how he knew there was great power there. I heckled my brothers and sisters about being quick. I apologize, I'm almost done. Uh, like they've said, I talked to my dad a lot uh, in the last six weeks. You know, when he was okay, I don't know that we wouldn't always talk. Um, even if we went, if I went there, sometimes it wasn't a, a conversation. It was, the, you know, the saws going and the games on or whatever. But we we had a lot of talks and a lot of conversations. We talked a lot about uh, his old times. That's what he was good at talking about. Um, I too will cherish those talks and those times. Um, but what I can hear in my in my mind is I left every time I left I said I love you dad and he, and he said I love you son that's the way we ended every one and I wasn't always so good to do that before but I did and uh, and I know I'll hear that again I mean I mean not even in the next life I'm not talking I know I'll hear that soon and for that I'm grateful I'm grateful for uh, the things that he instilled in me. Most of all, a love of this gospel that we have and that we cherish. He was, uh, he was a good one, and he loved his Savior, and I do too. I want you to know it, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I'm feeling a little unprepared, I guess, because I see my brothers and sister have these papers and, you know, typed out and stuff, and I don't have anything. So uh, I'm sorry. But, but I learned how to talk from uh, a great man. I've been serving in a bishopric for five years now with uh, Bishop Mason. And his wife says, has told him, all you have to do is prepare a two-minute talk because you'll stand up there and cry for 13 and and uh, say two minutes worth of words. And so I'm going to probably do that. I'll probably sit up here and cry for a little bit, and then I'll sit down. So um, the other problem with going last is most of your talk's been given. So I'm going to cuss my brothers and sisters for, for saying everything I was going to say. But uh, a couple things um, about my dad. My See, here I go. I'm going to cry. Mary asked me the other day, she says, if there's two things you could say that you learned from your dad, what would that be? And it took me about two seconds to say honesty and hard work. It's the two, first two things that came to my mind. And I remember as a teenage kid, you know, sometimes we try and avoid punishment because we know we did stuff that we shouldn't have done. And for some reason, they always found out. You'd come home and you'd say, you want to talk about it? 
I'd be like, oh, I didn't do it, Dad. <laughs> Wish I would have said, yeah, Dad, we better talk about it. Because I think uh, I think the cussing I would have got would have been a lot less. And he even said that. He says, you know, I would have been probably saying a few things to you, but I wouldn't have been <laughs> so disappointed and, and mad at you. So he says uh, that's one thing is you always be honest, no matter what the situation, you always you always tell the truth, and, and from there, things will work out, and and uh, it has. I've learned that, and, and it, it has always worked out. If you just tell the truth or, or be honest, even sometimes it's hard, it is, it'll always work out for the best. With the hard work thing, I, I remember as a kid, um, Christmas was always a big thing with my parents, and sometimes I look back and think how did they do what they did for us um, because it seemed like you know we weren't rich by any means but Christmas was always a big deal we we wake up Christmas morning and have huge amounts of presents sometimes we would find them on Christmas Eve but we won't tell those kind of stories um, well Justin Justin watched him bring in Christmas one year from the trailer and I she knows now. <laughs> oh, yes. But uh, anyway, we, we got to ex experience what they were going to give us well before. Well, be Justin's telling me to shut up. <laughs> um, but I, I look back now, and I, I know the way that they did that. And I remember my dad spending countless hours in, in his shop. Um, I don't even know what time he would go to bed, two, three in the morning, get up at five and go to work. But he would build doll furniture and shelves and, and all sorts of things, and then they would go all over the, the country and, and sell those things and, and be able to provide uh, the things that we needed. Um, and, I, and I appreciate him for that, and I've always uh, felt like that that was something that I, I've learned that you don't get anything in this life just because you're breathing air, but you have to earn it, and you have to work hard for it, and, and I've appreciated that, and I've, I've tried to follow that in my life, and I know my brothers and sister have as well, and I, I know his grandkids know that as well, is the, the way you get things is by working hard. I'm going to share a little experience that Marlo shared with me. She shared it with all of us that day. It was the afternoon before he passed away, and she said she had been talking to him. By the time I got there, he was no longer able to talk <laughs> that day, but she said she'd been talking with him, and, and he was pretty much down to yes, no answers, um, couldn't really express much. And she said, Dad, is Grandma here with you? He said, yeah. She said, is he still here? And she says, yeah. He says, is Grandpa here with you? And he says, or has Grandpa been here? And she says, yeah. And he says, is Grandpa still here? No. He had such a testimony of the gospel and of his Savior. And I know that He's with his mom and dad now, and his other family members, and kind of jealous he gets to see my daughter before I do. But I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for my knowledge of the gospel and for my testimony of it. I'm going to close with just a, uh, it's called a prayer for my dad. It's by Ron. Uh, Trammer, it says, Dear God, I gratefully thank you for giving me my dad. You must really love me because you gave the best you had. Watch over him and bless him, Lord, and keep him in your care. And may he fill my love for him in my, is my humble, heartfelt prayer. I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, 
I'm not going to take a long time, just a few comments. Uh, I visited with Jolaine and Marlowe the other night, and they assured me that Don didn't want a long service, so I'm going to do my part to help out on that. But, but you know, I sitting up here, families can be together forever. And I saw it from the back side. You guys saw it from the front side. All those from little tiny ones up to all those grandkids standing up here. What a beautiful sight. I, I just I sit there and thought, man, this is, this is beautiful to see that. And I thought to myself, you know, that didn't happen just by chance, that group that was standing up here. It was a lot of work and love and caring and perseverance and goes into raising a family like that. It's, it's amazing. And you see that, you just, you know, I, it's what I wish for all of us in our families to have that kind of togetherness and love. And, and you, you've heard it here today. And the brothers and sister that has spoken, you've heard what kind of man Don was. I didn't know Don growing up. He was eight years older than I am, so by the time I was in elementary school, he was in high school, and he was gone, and I really didn't know him. I, I knew his dad a little bit. His dad worked down the elementary, and I remember that. He was probably the best custodian janitor the Salina Elementary ever had, but maybe that's where he got his work ethic from. Or, and he was always a cheerful man. I, I do remember that as a little kid, that uh, his dad, Clyde, was just a very happy, cheerful man. And I, I was just a little kid. He was always there at the school, and I remembered that. But I got to know Don when, uh, I don't even know how far back this is. I can't remember the, I think President Sperry sitting back there. Him and I got called into the high council about the same time. Isn't that right? And uh, Don was already in there. He was in the high council. And I got to know him at that point. You know, you, you have assignments, and we spoke together. And, and I, I grew to love that man. And like he's been spoken here, a lot of love and kindness. Just, just a good, kind man. And then uh, I didn't last it through the whole five years of the high council. When, when Don was called to be bishop of the Salina Fourth Ward, he grabbed me to be his young men's president. So I got out of a year of high council by doing that. But we had some, with, with him as a bishop and I'm not going to take any credit because he made things happen. But we had some remarkable experiences with our youth in that ward, in the fourth ward. We had, a, I don't know how many of you people here were involved, we had a, a trip out to Lehman's Cave, Caves, and we went out there and had a fantastic trip with our youth. We went. Also, he arranged, we worked on it for quite a while. We went down and rafted the Colorado River, our youth groups. And, and I think back at, the, at those things, my children were in that age group that they were in young men and young women's coming up through when he was the bishop. My own son, well, he, we were down, we were down the gas station, you know, they talking to Justin, where are you, Justin? Oh, he's over here. And Dixon stands right there and told Justin, he says, yeah, your dad was my favorite bishop. I loved him. And my own wife says, she says that to me. Well, he was my favorite bishop too. <laughs> so, he, was a, he was just a fantastic individual. And I grew, I grew to love him as I got to know him more and more. So we worked together through. And my things with him was always church type things that I, I got to know him through. Do you know... And I'm going to tell one more ex little experience I had with him two or three years ago. I don't remember the exact date, but and then, I, then I'll sit down. And, but he, he got a hold of me and wanted to come in for a temple recommend. I think it's been t two, to, two or three years ago. I don't remember the exact date, but he came in, sat down, and we talked for a few minutes. And he got, well, you know, those of you that have been a bishop, 
if you're really in a hurry, how quick can you do a Temple Recommend interview? You can read through the questions and get some signatures. You can be done in, what, three minutes? But we sat in there for probably a good half hour, maybe more than that, I don't know. And he told me some stories of things that happened when he was bishop. And, but before it all ended, and this touched me deeply, he bore his testimony to me. Probably as powerful a testimony as I've ever heard. And we were sitting there, you know, I, I thought back, you know, 15 years ago or 20, I was on the other side of the desk and the interview was going the other way and I'm sitting here, I'm interviewing you. We're looking each other eye to eye and you know what he was telling me was the truth. He bore his testimony, the Savior, to me. And of the atonement and of families and it was strong. And I, I just want everybody especially his family that's here today, to know that. That's who he was. And, you know, that's just, it was strong. And it, was, it was amazing. I come out of that interview, I've never had one quite like that since, but I come out of that interview, and I just thought, wow, what a good man. And brothers and sisters, I just... Ronnie asked me this morning, are you going to write anything down? And I said, probably not. I'm just going to talk from my heart. Because I had so many things the last few days rolling around in my heart and my head of experiences I had with Don through the years. And I thought, I've got plenty of information there that I can. But I just want all of you to know that I had a great love for Don. As we worked through church things together through the years. And he's a good man. He set a great example for all of us. And I look at his family. I go back to a beautiful sight with his grandkids standing up here. That was beautiful. I leave you my testimony that I know that God lives. I know that we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, that has died for us. I uh, don't want to go on any longer. We, they said they wanted a short meeting, so I, I just close by leaving you my testimony of that, and I do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The conclusion of services today, we'll have a congregational hymn, hymn number 241, Count Your Many Blessings, Company is Kathy Anderson, Chorister Marion Harrison. Benediction will be given by Janet Towers, a sister. Following the benediction, we will proceed to the internment at the East Side Cemetery. Grave dedication will be done by Tyler Okerlund. Today's pallbearers, Trevor Okerlund, Marshall Okerlund, Jaden Gurney, Porter Okerlund, Oakley Mason, Cannon Okerlund, Trey Taylor, Chris Edwards, honorary pallbearers, Paul Okerlund, Glenn Okerlund, Jerry Mason, Brian Rasmussen, Jim Towers, Don Nielsen, Lynn Robbins, Terry Anderson, Craig Burr, Stephen, Stephen Miller, and Newell Hales.
Our dear, kind, and beloved Heavenly Father, as we come to the conclusion of these services and tributes for Don Okerlund, we are at this time so grateful for his life, for the gifts and talents that he was given and that he shared so frequently with others, and most of all for his unabiding and deep testimony of thee and our Savior Jesus Christ. We're so grateful for the knowledge that we have for the plan of salvation and for the atonement and for all that it means to us. We're so grateful for the expressions of love and memories that has been offered in word and in music. At this time, we know that the loss of Dawn is providing a big gap in this dear family. We ask for thy love, guidance, and continuous blessings upon the family and especially upon his sweet wife, Jolaine, and upon his dear children and grandchildren. We ask that thou, thy spirit be with those that have traveled near and far today, that they will return to their homes in safety, and that your spirit will continue to be with us throughout the remainder of this day as we travel to the cemetery. Please help us to continue to give our lives for good in memory of Don, and that we will exemplify and do those things that were the best of his qualities. We love these Heavenly Father and are so grateful to thee for all that we have. And we ask and pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> 